Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. Oh, we are on episode eight of Free Dive to the Future. And I'm just gonna say, eight's my lucky number. And usually the last couple series I've watched, episode eight has been really, really good. So I'm pretty excited. <laughs> last episode was insanity. Um, it just, there was so much. I, don't, I know I talked forever about that episode, but there was so much to talk about between now and Natsio's conversation, between Asahi and Ikuya meeting back up, between Mako, you know, becoming the coach, and then mainly Haru deciding that, uh, yeah, I'm going to do the individual medley. And to find out that him and Ryuji have been practicing this whole time with him doing the other strokes, it all makes sense. I, I think it came out of nowhere for me because when... Haru kept saying he was practicing for Akuya's sake. I thought it was he was practicing the free um, 100 meters or 50 meters or whatever so that he could beat Hiori and then, you know, be able to talk to Akuya. But that's not it. It's that he wanted to race uh, Akuya face-to-face. -face. It's like, oh, my gosh. And in the meantime, Sosuke is going to have a surgery. Like, it's just uh, we're entering. This episode will mark what normally for a 12-episode series is like the end of the second act. Right? Because the first act, we set up our characters, we set up all our relationships, our conflict. The second act, the conflict and everything all comes into play, which it has with Akuya in these last couple of episodes. And in this episode, usually in a 12 act, 12 episode, three act structure, episode eight kind of ends that second act and moves into your third act, which is building towards the climax and the resolution. So I can't believe we only have this episode and four episodes left. That's still, it hasn't hit me that Freeze almost caught up. And I know I still have the Road to the World movie, um, but I'm trying to savor all of my free episodes because it's been such a journey with this show and I'm not ready for it to end. I know we still have two big movies that are going to come out later in 2021 and 2022, so that's exciting. But, oh my gosh, you guys. Oh, I, I'm so excited and I'm so ready for this episode. Metamorphosis of the soul. Oh my gosh. Like, I'm... Mm. This, the episode, episode seven, ended on such a tease, like us getting to see them jump into the water and not see the race. I have been excited all week to watch this episode and to see what happens. So I have my bingo card. I have my stamper. I am ready to go. So thank you all for watching this series with me. Uh, it's been so much fun. But yes, let's do episode eight of Free Dive to the Future. And we're going to start that off here in five, four, three two, one, and let's go. Oh my God. What even was this episode? What even was this episode? This was amazing. This was, my computer's glitching, I don't care. This episode was absolutely fantastic. Uh, we have more bingo things to check off already. I already know that. Um, Oh my God, I, I, this has been the most like, after all of the angst that we've had this season with Free, after all of the angst that has built up this season, this episode was like a pure Mary Poppins giant spoonful of sugar to help the medicine go down. And I, I'm floored. I was smiling so much this whole episode and fangirling and squeeing to to my heart's extent because this was amazing. I the only thing I'm sad about is that we won't need Rin now to talk to Akuya. Akuya has has resolved his conflict. Um, we won't need Rin or Sosuke to talk to him. So I am a little bummed about that. I still think that we'll get. I hope we get a Rin Akuya interaction, especially since Rin has talked to Natsuya. And so I think that we're still going to get that because we still have the All Invitational. But, oh my God, you guys, amazing, amazing. I, we, just, we just need to go through this episode because this was just, this was 23, episodes, 23 minutes of just wonderfulness. Um, and there's so much to talk about. Like, I have raved all season about the character interactions. And now even, oh God, Kasumi, I love it. I love it so much. Um, yeah, so we, we started out this episode with Hiori and his crisis. And so I've been talking about how Hiori and Akuya both view themselves as the mermaid in a lot of regards. And so if that's the case, then my question is for each of them, who is the prince, who is the witch? And so in 
Hiori's case, if Hiori in his mind is the mermaid, then the prince is Akuya. And the witch, we don't really, I don't know who the witch would be in this regard, but on the one hand, you can look at it from that perspective and say if Hiori's the mermaid and Akuya's the prince, the witch handing the knife to the mermaid to stab it is in that regard saying that Akuya has to ever ties with Hiori in order for Akuya to stay strong. Like, that's how he views it in one circumstance. But then if you look at it as Akuya being the mermaid, then Haru is the prince, and Hiori is the witch, and Hiori is giving the knife to Akuya, saying you need to cut Haru out of your life if you're going to stay strong. And I think it's more the latter, where Hiori is viewing himself now as the witch, saying you need to cut Haru out of your life, and if you can do that, you can stay strong and remain a mermaid, and if not, you're going to disappear. Because that's what their argument has kind of been leading them to both think and Hiori sitting there thinking you know that's not necessarily right and so this conversation between him and Mako holy crap I absolutely love this scene and it takes place right before the individual medley relay which we know now Hiori did not watch because he stayed near the vending machine but Mako I have to say for Mako for (laughs) Mako-kun I freaking love Mako I've loved Mako since halfway through season two, but this season, Mako has so stepped up as the parental best friend figure because, you know, Mako, he already has been kind of an asshole this whole series. He's not been nice, and he especially wasn't nice to Mako. Like, he wouldn't shake his hand. He was cruel to Haru. But you know what? Mako doesn't hold a grudge. Mako is a freaking saint. And as soon as he sees Hiori, he's like, oh, Tuno-kun. And Hiori just looks back at him with this, like, grimace on his face, like, oh, God, it's you. And as soon, like, you can tell he doesn't look happy to see Mako, but as soon as he starts talking, he puts on the fake smile, and he's like, oh, hey, you're here too, watching, aren't you? And then Mako, he's like, oh, yeah. And Mako is also a master of passive-aggressive backhanded comments. Like, he's not going to be mean and outright yell at someone like Asahi might, but he's also like, yeah, I'm here to root for my friends. <laughs> it's like, like burn, Mako, burn. And, it, and Mako probably doesn't even mean it that way. And then, of course, Hiori's like, oh, you're friends. And, and I like that Mako is trying to reason with Hiori and understand him. And he's like, when I swam with you, you're trying too hard at something. And, and Hiori, of course, wants to distance himself and play it off like nothing is wrong. And Mako's like, no, it's between you and Akuya. And I love that Mako's like, you should have more faith in him. And that just, like, is such a blow to Hiori because Hiori is, like, so... Everything Hiori's been doing has been, in his mind, to help Akuya. And he's... It's like that one comment, you should have more faith in him, is, like, challenging everything Hiori's done without... I don't think Mako realizes just to the extent that Hiori thinks about this... But that look on Hiori's face where his like mouth is like... Because he's like, oh, well... His attitude and the way he's been acting around Akuya suggests that he doesn't have faith in him. He doesn't have faith that Akuya can talk to Haru and the others and not abandon Hiori. Like, he's so convinced that Akuya is going to become friends again with them and leave him behind that he doesn't have faith in him. And Mako's saying that... And Mako's just meaning it as a nice, friendly thing. He's like, oh, I just think if you have more faith in him, it'll be easier for you. And that just, like, triggers Hiori. He's like, oh, you don't even know! <laughs> like, one of those things. And and then, of course, he ties it back to Haru. He's like, oh, like, Nanase, is that what you're getting at? And I love Mako's expression, like, oh, excuse me? Why are you, why are you yelling at me? I, don't, I didn't know this was a tender subject. And then, of course, Hiori's, Hiori's like, that's all everyone talks about is, is Haru. And it's like, oh, Hiori, you don't realize Haru's the main protagonist of the series, clearly. Um... He's like, why did Ikuya have to see him again? I don't get it. And Mako's... And you could tell in that moment, I think Mako realizes just what Hiori is going through because he kind of had that same situation again with Haru and Rin. And he's like, if you swam with Haru, you'd understand. He has something special when he's in the water. And Hiori's like, oh, God, really? (laughs) I just... I love that Mako tucks up Haru so much. It's like, oh, wonderful. And he's like, let's go. Akuya's race is starting. Like, again, Mako is trying to connect with Hiori and be a friend. He's like, hey, Akuya's race is starting. Let's go. And Hiori just doesn't follow him. 
Uh, it's just, oh, that conversation between them was so, so good. I loved it so much. That was so needed, and it's going to tie back. Like, everything in this episode connected with itself and tied back, and it just all came full circle. It was wonderful. So, getting past the OP. I like that now sits down and crosses his legs by Nazia. He's like, hey, hey, BF. What's going on? And um, and I like that Nazia was like, man, that kid said he was only a swim free, and now he's doing the individual medley. And now, being Mako Sr., is like, well, we all grow up. He's no different. And it's such a cute callback. It's like, oh, Haru has grown as a character. He has developed so much throughout the series. And I feel like his growth and development has all accumulated into this. And so, okay, he already did go where the race was. All right. He just kind of ditched out afterwards. Um, but I just love that. I love Haru's growth as a character, that he went from being someone unsure of himself to now someone that wants to help Akuya become better and regain his self-confidence. And the whole monologue, first of all, Kiwani just animating water left and right like it's no big deal. Like just here, have this amazing water animation because that's what we're good at. And the tracking shots, it was so good. Um, but I love the monologue with Akuya that this whole time Akuya has been worried that people were going to leave him. Him and He and Hiori have the same worries. They both are afraid that they're going to be left alone. And so they created this toxic environment around each other based on that. And Akuya just recognizing, he's like, I haven't been able to be free because I've caged my heart. I have, I've drugged myself into a corner and I've isolated myself thinking that that would make me stronger, but it's just done the opposite. And he's like, I've not allowed myself to be around friends because I thought that that would you know, that they'd leave me and it'd make my heart hurt again. But I really have needed that this whole time. And seeing Haru swim and seeing how free he is and not restricted, it somehow does that Nakama magic and it does the same thing with Hiori. And it's like, you know what? I, it did that, like, Ray was fascinated by Haru swimming. Mako has been, Rin has been. I mean, Haru's just got that protagonist charm. And it's just, ugh. But I love the montage and seeing him say, I know why I clung to swimming because of those bonds. And I was afraid when those bonds were originally severed that it would happen again. And so I didn't want to experience that pain. But it's worth it. You know, if it happens again, it happens again. But it's worth it to have those bonds in the first place. And you only become stronger by swimming with others and having that support. And it's like, ugh. I loved it like Natsuya, he did nothing to, to solve this conflict. It was mainly Mako and Haru and the others and Hiori. Uh, Natsuya is just like, oh, hey, bro, glad I could come help. And it's like, Natsuya. I love Natsuya, but I'm like, dude, you, you, you somehow managed to get through this episode not having to have a conversation with your brother. It's fine. But I'm like, dude. And then he has the conversation at the end, which we'll get to. But yeah. And then he's back. And I'm sorry, but all the feels when they both get to the end and Akuya barely beats him. Barely beats him. And so Akuya's go so Akuya is going to the all invitational in the individual medley and uh, Haru and them are going in the free medley and in the freestyle and Asahi's going as well and so is Hiori. So but that I'm back and Haru's just like welcome back. And just the soft expression on Akuya's face and then the soft expression on Haru's face where he said, I kept my promise with you. And Akuya's like, you remember? Because Akuya doesn't have a good memory. <laughs> Clearly. And Haru's like, I'd never forget that. Like, that's just, that's so sweet. I love that they're just crying in the pool. And it's like, dudes, you guys gotta get out of there because the next group's coming in. But that hug. And then Haru's smiling. Ugh! My heart. My absolute heart. And now it's like, oh, look. Akuya didn't need you, Natsuya. Haru helped him all along. It's like, oh my god. I And then, of course, Hiori. Hiori's thinking that it's all over, that Akuya's not going to be his friend anymore. And, oh my gosh. That just... I The emotional range Akuya has shown in this episode has been like more than every other episode in starting days. <laughs> so, it's been so refreshing to see Akuya like, be emotional and be just like... Because he's been compared to Haru a lot this season, but he's not Haru. 
he has a lot more emotional range than Haru. But Haru, even being soft in that moment, it's like, oh. And I like that he doesn't, he said, I wanted to be like Haru. Because Haru is my hero. It's like, and he's clearly embarrassed by it because it's something he made as a kid. Um, and then also he like joking in with him and everything to explain. And Mako, God, again, Mako coming in clutch this episode because Mako's like, oh, well, you know, Haru is a hero to people. And I like that Ikuya's so embarrassed. I love the expression and emotion that we see on Ikuya's face. Like it's, it's the most we've seen this whole series. And Haru's just like, a hero and he's like oh not like a superhero but someone that's supportive and that cares about others and not one that fights evil but he says someone that everyone looks up to and the kind that helps out whenever someone's lost or stuck and that really has been Haru like Haru's helped out Rei he's helped out um, Ikuya he's helped out Mako and Haru's like I'm not a hero and he's like you might be somebody's hero Ikuya and Mako's like, that's true. You just don't realize it yet. Just like Haru. And <laughs> and I love that that's going to come full circle. And Asahi's like, yeah, heroes don't see themselves as heroes. That's what makes them heroes. And then Asahi's like, everything's wrapped up nicely. Now we got to do the relays. It's great. And, uh And then Mako, of course, is like, I think you need to go talk to your friends at Shimo. And he's like, yeah, I do. Um, and he's like, go on. We'll catch you later. And I love that. It's just, oh, uh, the friendship, the Nakama on this episode. It's so dang good. And, uh And then Haru's like, I don't know how I could be somebody's hero. He's like, that just doesn't make sense to me. And Mako, of course, I love this line. It's like Mako being the perfect boyfriend ever. And he's like, do you think I'm Akuya's hero? And Mako's like, not just Akuya's, I'm sure. And it's like, oh. Mako's like, you're my hero too, you know. Ugh. And I love, like, this is all I wanted was them to make up Hiori and Akuya and for them to come to terms with everything. Because up until now, Akuya, Akuya doesn't have the best memory because he doesn't remember or he's kind of, he, it's his subtle way of saying later when they talk about the kid in, in kindergarten that he saw in the pool. It's his subtle way of saying that it's Hiori. Um, but him saying, I want to swim relays again. And it's like, and what Hiori's been afraid of this whole time has been that Akuya is going to abandon him. And because here's the thing, this goes back to the whole Rin and Sosuke thing back in season two. Rin abandoned his team to swim in the relay with Haru in them, even if it was just a one-time thing. And you can tell Hiori thinks that's going to be the case, that he's just not going to swim with him anymore. And I, that's, I couldn't help but root for Akuya when he was like, I'll do the relay on one condition and that's that Hiori swims with me. And of course the captain, I think it's Hoka, Hokashido, we have to get his name here in a minute, um, is like, yeah, sure. And Hiori not being left behind, because that's what Hiori's been afraid of, is that he too was going to be left behind by Akuya once he became friends with Haru and the others again. And him saying, if I'm with Hiori, I know I can pull it off. And Hiori just blinks like, what? It's like... It's so good. It's so good. Ah! And then we just, we go back. And of course, Nagisa, I love that Ray, when he hears that Haru did the individual medley, Ray is like, what? And Nagisa is like, excuse me? But it's, I'm so glad that Ray got to hear that because Haru, Ray's conviction of learning all the strokes and Haru's support of that. And then Ray finding out that Haru swam all the stro strokes in that individual medley it's like, mm, it's so darn good. It's so darn good. And then, of course, Nagisa is like, we have to watch this race. And Romeo's like, I want to watch too. Like, I like that Romeo is picking up Nagisa's habits. And then Ayumu's like, I already got the AV room. We got it checked out. We're good. I, I can't wait for them all to reunite. I really can't. It's going to be such a good reunion. But, uh, and I can't wait for Romeo and Shizu to meet them. It's like... It's going to be so darn good. I'm, I'm so excited. But yeah, and then of course, Mikashiba and the others are watching. Uh, Momo is watching them all. And we finally get to know what the purple hair guy's name is. It's Kiryu. The purple haired man's name is Kiryu. I love it. And then, uh, what they say? Okay, I want to pause this. Our people racing, Mikashiba Seijuru, which is the captain, uh, Kiryu Isana, 
Isana, Kiryu Isana, okay. And then Asahi and Haru. And then Hoshikawa Subasa. And then uh, Terashima is the archer fish. And then Akuya and, and Hoyori. So yeah, Hoshikawa is our dark. Hoshikawa is the blue haired captain for um, Shimogami. And uh, Kiryu is the purple haired guy on, on, Hide, on Hidaka. And I like that. Mikashiba and uh, the other captain, they like have that rivalry. It's like, ooh, ooh, is there another ship forming? Is the older brother and the cat, are the captains shipping? I'm all for it if they are. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. But the idea of them all racing and people on all sides cheering them on, like Momo cheering on that team and then Nagisa and Ray and them cheering them on. And then, oh my gosh, I haven't seen you since the newcomer tournament. And shut it, cure you. It's like, yeah, I'm a bazooka today. I love it. And I'm sorry. I am so sorry. But I, ever since I learned that uh, Ikuya's VA was Tsukishima from Haikyuu, I have, because Tsukishima and Haikyuu, we all call him Salty Shima. He's a salty little guy. He has such a way of insulting, and it's so coy and wonderful. And I've been like, ever since Akuya, I found out he had the same voice actor. I was like, man, it'd be cool if Akuya was like that too. And this is it. When Asahi and him get there, he's like, I bet you're freaking out, Asahi says. And Akuya's like, I'm fine. I practice telling myself in the mirror, I am a genius. I am a genius. And he has that little coy look. And Asahi's like, you jerk! <laughs> That was amazing. I I was like, yes, I live for the salty Ikuya banter with Asahi. I live for it. And I love that Natsuya, he gets so into the race and now looks over and he's like, it's like, now y'all aren't fooling anybody. You and Natsuya just go get a room. Get out of here. Like, <laughs> I love it. And then, of course, of course, Haru has not had the conversation with Mako that he doesn't know Mako talked with Hiori, I'm sure. And he says, trust Akuya. And it goes right back to Mako saying, have faith in him. And then Hiori's like, I don't need you to tell me. I do trust him. And it's like, uh. And of course, Akuya is a lot faster than Asahi, so he gives Hiori the head start. And then Haru is better at free than, than uh, Hiori. And of course he gets to see, he gets to see them swimming. Hiori connects. He gets the Nakama powers of Haru and his magical swimming mermaidness. It's wonderful. I love it. And then at the very end, I at the very end, of course, um, Haru's team wins by a long shot. But that whole thing of Ikuya reaching his hand down and helping Hiori up, it's like amazing. And then Hiori saying. I guess I lost, and Haru's like, in free, maybe. Meaning, you still have your friendship that you've won with Akuya. And Akuya's smiling and being like just so happy. I, I needed this. He's been so down, and now that he's a happy swimmer, I'm like, I, I didn't know I needed this as much as I did. And him mending the fences with Hiori. I'm sorry, I know Hiori has been a jerk this whole time. And that's when, okay, so I, they paused it. Hiori smile when he was like, thank you for swimming with me and smiling and Hiori giving that smile that Ikuya calls beautiful. When he says, oh, that's my line, thanks. And it's that same smile that he saw back in kindergarten and it suddenly, Ikuya's short-term memory kicks in and he remembers suddenly and that little blush and the eye shimmer, it's like, oh my God. And Haru's like, you too, huh? It's fine. I got a boyfriend already. It's cool. Uh, and then, yeah. So I like that before we get into the Hiori conversation, uh, I like that the news reporter is like, that Haru is something, isn't it, Ryuji? And he's like, ah, I give him 70%. Like he sells a lot more potential. And I like that line, what is he going to turn into? So I'm curious to know. I, I, I have the feeling we're not done with Ryuji because he's not met up with Mihail yet. And so I'm curious to know where we're going to go with that. I still love that he's Sakuragi's voice actor. I love it. It's absolutely wonderful. But yeah, so then, very similar, might I note, very similar to an episode 12 uh, or episode 13 of season 2 when Haru and Mako had that makeup conversation. Very similar to that. 
uh, in the gym, we have the same sort of thing happen between Hiori and Akuya. So it's a nice little parallel there. And then he says, back in kindergarten, at the swimming school I went to, there was one kid who was always swimming alone. And, and, and see, I thought that it had been established when they re-met in middle school that they both realized they were the kid in the kindergarten pool. But I guess it wasn't. I think Hiori recognized it. Hiori realized that Akuya was that same kid, but he never told him. He didn't want to tell him that he's... Because I'm sure he thought that was kind of weird. He's like, oh, I don't want to tell you that I've known you since kindergarten because that might be odd. Um, but he realizes, and there's that little blush and his eye twinkling, and Akuya has put two and two together, and he's like, I wanted to be that kid's friend, but I had trouble bringing myself to talk to him. And then that thing, one day I finally did, and he... He smiled at me. It was a beautiful smile. Uh, and then he moved away. And it's like Ikuya finally connected the dots and Hiori's connected the dots. And he's like, was that kid you? And of course, you know they both know. You know they both know. And then, and then Hiori saying, I bet your smile was that kid's salvation. Like saying that he was, you know, ah, oh, you were a hero to him, Akuya. And that ties back to what Mako told him, that you're somebody's hero too, and it's just, ah, uh, <laughs> like I'm just flailing my arms around in fangirling mode. It's so good. And then, of course, Natsuya shows up. He's like, hey, I didn't do anything this episode, but, uh, congrats. <laughs> But I do love that Nazi is like, you've helped me realize that I want to kind of become a professional swimmer too and swim with you, brother, on the world stage. And he's got the tears in his eyes. And I love Nazi, but I'm like, dude, I'm glad you've come to this realization. I'm glad you're talking to Ikuya and mending things. But this was like totally Haru, Hiyori, and Mako's business and Asahi's business this episode. You just came in there at the end taking some credit. I love you, Nazi, but gosh. And then I like that Hiori, um, I, I do like that Natsuya apologized to Hiori and, and recognized that he was putting way too much burden on Hiori. I'm glad that he did that and that now maybe Natsuya will have a more proactive role in Akuya's life than just passing off responsibility to others or sitting on the sideline. Like, I'm glad for that. Very glad. Um, and then I like that uh, Hiori is just like, hey, go hang out with Haru and them. You know, you guys haven't connected in a while. Just, it's fine. Go on and do that. And then I just, Kasumi, six degrees of Kasumi, out of left field. Kasumi just shows up and he's like, Kasumi's like, hey, I couldn't help but notice that you've been left out of the group too. Kind of like I am sometimes. Want to join the basketball club? <laughs> I do want to see Kasumi play basketball just one time in this series. I just want to see him play basketball once. But I like that Kasumi is always there as, like, the extra friend that, like, oh, hey, don't be by yourself. I'll be here with you. And it's like Kasumi knows everyone. He just pops up and he's like, hey, who knows everybody in this show? This guy. And that I'm glad that at least Kasumi is trying to be uh, a friend. He's like, oh, you look bored. Uh-huh. And obviously he's seen Kasumi with the others. <laughs> And I love it. Hiori's like, I'll think about it. But it's like, nah. And then they all hang out together. Uh, it's the, the ending scene with them hanging out together, the four of them, Akuya and Asahi and Mako and Haru, reminds me a lot of the end of the OVA where they're all just sitting there and discussing about having practice tournaments and everything. Ugh. It's like I want to melt my chair. <laughs> This episode was so good! And the preview, we're finally seeing these mysterious figures that have been in the OP. We're finally seeing them. I, I'm amazed that we've already resolved the conflict. I'm amazed that we've already gotten to that point. I'm happy. I'm happy we've not drug out the angst. That's amazing. But I'm so curious now. We have four episodes left. And I'm so curious. Interval in the evening calm. So it's before the All Invitational. I'm really curious how this is going to go down. So excited. Oh my gosh, you guys. This episode was amazing. Just all the fangirling. I just, this is all I wanted for free. It's like, uh, this felt like a season finale. It felt like a season finale. And we still have four episodes left. Show, what are we doing? 
I love it so much. Um, but yeah, we still have bingo, so I'm gonna be done with that. Let me get off there. Get off there now. Uh, we still have bingo. So uh, on my bingo card here, uh, Rin and Haru still have not met. Um, Akuya and Haru arguing over who's angstier. No, I, I don't know if that'll ever happen now. Um, I don't even know. Uh, we do have uh, Asahi and Akuya arguing to swim meet. You know what? That was the one I was thinking of. Asahi and Akuya. They did have a little banter back and forth there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna say it. Eh. And then nobody else. Because we didn't really get handsy with uh, Hiori, so I'm not gonna count it. But oh my god, guys, I I can't tell you. I'm so close to a bingo. At this point, I have like two different ways, three ways I can go, and I'm so close. I have like one or two things left. So I hope that by the end of this season, I thought I'd have a blackout by this point, and that's not happened. So I'm hoping by the end of the season, I do have a bingo. That's what I'm hoping. Um, I, I'm assuming once Rin gets here into the picture again, that we'll get more. We haven't seen a lot of Rin the last couple episodes, but we've been resolving this deal with Akuya. So now that Rin, we know Rin's going to be at the All Invitational, so there's going to be that. But um, but yeah, oh my gosh. But yeah, that's so close to bingo. I can taste it. Um, but you guys, this was mm, this was a good episode. This was a really good episode. I gushed about it enough for nearly half an hour. So um, I'm curious to know your thoughts down below. Um, I do appreciate, as awful as Hiori has been this season, I appreciate that Akuya is taking steps to move forward with his friendship with them to repair their bonds. And that Hiori has hopefully done the same. Like, I'm excited for that. Uh, I'm curious to see with these last four episodes where that's going to go. So in any case, in any case, I hope y'all enjoyed this reaction. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below. Um, please don't spoil me, but I hope you have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll be back next week with episode nine of Free Dive to the Future.